There are a number of tutorials on YouTube about how to load film holders, and though they are well done, they give you no more information than the basics. I want to go way beyond that threshold and show you how I load film holders, especially with emphasis upon avoiding lint and dust. There are not many photographic things more annoying than trying to retouch dust spots from a sky of an 8x10 contact print. This is especially true if you're realizing in pop, that's printout paper, or albumin, as you will also be trying to match color values. In order to load film holders my way, you will need a few things. Firstly, a clean plastic pouch you can store your holders in. I save the black plastic envelopes that my film is wrapped in. Having used only Ilford FP4 for many years, I can tell you that inside their 8x10 boxes, Ilford now stores the film in envelopes that are only big enough to hold 6x6.5x8.5 by, six by film holders. About 7 plus years ago, their envelopes were more generous in size, and all the envelopes I use for 8x10 were from that period. For 6.5x8.5 and, and smaller film holders, you can use clear lock sealed bags. I think there are products along this line that are larger, but they are quite expensive. As an alternative, I suggest finding a plasticky type cloth at Walmart and having it sewn into a pouch form. It does not need to be fancy. For 8x10, a simple pouch sewn together and laid perfectly flat with the dimensions of 10 and a quarter inches by 15 inches is just great. You'll also need a painter's brush. I like the three inch pure bristle type you can buy at Ace Hardware or Walmart. They cost just a little over a dollar each. You'll need a light blocking room to load your film in. A bathroom is fine, but you'll need to sit on the floor Indian style and load your holders in your lap. Make sure your pants are very clean and do not have lint or dust on them. Better to load in shorts. Don't set your film holders flat on the floor. They will surely pick up dust and lint no matter how well you cleaned the room beforehand. You can place your holders on their side against the wall, making sure that the floor is cleanly sponged before you begin. A few guidelines I follow. From the time of your previous loading, rinse your painter's brush out with water. Store it in a plastic bag to keep dust and lint off. Water rinse out your film holder bags. You can do this when you develop their corresponding negatives. Never stow your film holders outside of their bag. Always keep them covered inside. This will exponentially reduce the amount of dirt and lint they accumulate. So, let's start loading with a clean field. Today we will load on this table, which I have just dusted. Now, let me show you how I clean my film holders. I do this every time just before I load. Again, I always stow my film holders in their pouch. Start with the body of the film holder and brush thoroughly. This includes the top and the bottom flap. Brush both sides. Next, the film slides. Now here, be careful. Many times as you brush, the dust will migrate from one side of the slide to the other. Always observe closely. Finish your brushing with a portion of the slide that does not set next to the film. Finally, insert the slide into the holder. Of course, make sure the black top of the slide faces your film, or you'll confuse if an exposure was made. Also, make sure you have your locks in a neutral position and loose so you can cinch them later on. Once inserted, move the slide up and down in the holder. Many times particles will be found in the holder's light trap and you want to loosen them and brush them away. Repeat this as needed.
Finally, what you want to do is move the slide down to about one half inch above where the bends in the holder are that guide the film into place. Position your film holder so the film flap is away from you at the top. If your film flaps are very stiff, this makes loading in the dark difficult. Use tape and affix one end to the flap, the other to the table. This will firmly hold the flap down. Now it is lights out. Make sure everyone around knows what you are doing. What one light can do to a box of $110 film. Remove your sheet and ensure its cuts are on the upper right hand border. Then simply slide into the holder. If you find the film does not fit all the way, then it is hitting on the top lip inside the holder. Pull the film out a short distance and firmly advance the film once again. Finally, remove the tape from the flaps if you used it. Close the flap and let the film slide all the way down. Once the film box is closed, the lights can come back on. Twist the film holder locks into position and secure the film holder back in its envelope. Tape the envelope shut, and now you are finally done. Some closing thoughts. There are several companies that advertise anti-static brushes. Don't bother, they work poorly. There are also anti-static machines, but the tips are small and therefore inappropriate. Sometimes there is so much static in the air you can't remove the dust from your holder. If that's the case, water the slide down, if it's not a wood product, and then return several hours later. If you have cracks in your film slide, repair them with electrical tape. It is ugly, but it works as a long time solution. About the film holders themselves, Fidelity film holders are wonderful, but they are expensive. Lisco film holders are good too, but they are a little on the heavy side. I like the Agfa film holders the most. They are very light and extremely well constructed. Fulmer Graflex holders have a very heavy metal rib and, while they work well, are the heaviest of the holders. A Kodak film holders are also fine, provided they were made in the 1940s or later. If they are unstained in their wood, in other words, not black, stay away from them. They are very old and their felts are almost always plucking. Uh, same for any converted glass plate film holder. Their felts are very old and the hairs will loosen when you insert your film slide.